Hello YouTube, this is WFS, your doctor. And today I need to talk to you about something very important. It is a serious issue I feel that needs to be addressed and if it is not dealt with right now, it could escalate into something more serious than you could ever imagine. As you can see from the screen here, it says government effort to censor social media should be transparent. We have a freedom of speech issue that could be taking place over there at the Washington University and it needs to be discussed. Before we get into that, I want to address one thing. Why I call myself your doctor? That's basically coming from a 1983 movie with Dan Aykroyd called Dr. Detroit. And I'm not here to talk about the movie itself, but a line from that movie. Probably one of the best statements I've heard to come out of a Dan Aykroyd movie that I absolutely loved. And it basically goes like this. In every one of us, there is a doctor, a dormant doctor, a supreme arbitrator who can be summoned to intervene when crisis threatens the stability and well-being of our heartlands. And right now, my friends, I feel like this is one of those times where crises is threatening the stability and well-being of our heartlands. So it is time for the doctors to arise and let the world know what's going on. So let's get into this article here. And I really would like to have you comment on this. And if you like this video in particular, share it. Share it with your friends, share it with strangers. Let them know what may be going on. If you like the video again, comment. If you think that maybe this is not true, well, I've got another article to go along with it. But believe me when I tell you, I wouldn't be coming on here to talk about this if I didn't think it was a matter of, of utmost importance here because to me, freedom of speech is our God-given right in this country. It is. It's what our founding fathers fought so hard for. It's what I strongly believe in. I may not like your opinion on something. You may not like mine. But we do have a right to say things and critique other people's work in a nice way, of course. I mean, you got to, for the most part, you should be diplomatic. But I mean, look, I'm not telling anybody not to curse. But, you know, that's just not my thing. Freedom of speech is so important and it must be cherished. And to tell people that I don't like what this movie is or what this person says, so I'm going to shut you down. No, I'm against that. And what you're about to learn here is mind-blowing. How our own government is giving grant money out to universities to create computer programs, AIs, that will decide whether or not what you say on YouTube or any social media site is right or whether the program has, and the program, excuse me, the program is going to have the ability to either censor it or delete your video entirely if you're a content creator. And if we don't do something about this now, if we don't demand transparency and really, as much as this kind of scares me a little bit, government oversight into this, we must know what's going on with this. We cannot let just some college university with people who may have specific agendas as to what is and what is not free speech, we need to know what these rules are and who is making these rules. But before we get further into my debate and my discussion and my rant, let's get into the articles. The conservative news site, Just the News, reported last week that the government agencies were outsourcing their attempts to censor social media to a private consortium. While these stories feed into conservatives' par paranoia about bias against conservative groups, it also raises important issues of improper attempts by government agencies to circumvent free speech constraints. It suggests a minimum, at a minimum, the need for a regi regime of transparency and disclosure to prevent mis 
creep and political manipulation. Right there, my friends. Right there. It's not a conspiracy. If you've got government grant agencies coming out and releasing money to colleges to help create AI programs, that will inter determine what freedom of speech is, then we got a problem. The private sector group involved a consortium called the Election Integrity Partnership included the Stanford Internet Observatory, the University of Washington Center for an Informed Public, the Atlantic Council Digital for Sick Research Lab, and the social media analytical firm Gramplica. This is an issue. Hang on, let's continue. The con this consortium of serious and responsible organizations worked with the Department of Homeland Security, DHS, to pass on to social media companies certain posts that con they considered election misinformation during the 2020 election. Mainly, they were talking about the Biden laptop issue, which turned out to be a true event. Social media platforms could take action or not when they received this referral, but the platforms apparently took action about a third of the time. According to the group's report on the 2020 effort, this group is getting the band back together for the 2022, excuse me, 2022 election. It is worth noting that the DHS in its August 24th press release announcing that the termination of the disinformation government board reaffirmed that the countering disinformation that threatens the homeland and providing the public with accurate information in response is part of DHS's mission. As part of the mission since 2018, DHS's Cybersecurity and Information Security Agency, DCIS, excuse me, DCSI, has been referring to social media platforms posts it thinks constitute election disinformation and will almost certainly continue to do so. Okay, now this part of the article is interesting, very interesting. Israel's vision of version of an internet referral unit is called the cyber unit and its operation has been cleared by its courts of any free speech violations. It regularly refers, palest refers Palestinian posts to social media companies for action. But, here it comes, a report from a business group in September suggests that social media companies were biased in their content moderation actions involving these posts. The report recommends transparency among other ref reform measures. That seems to me to be the most responsible first step, even if further restrictions might be needed to protect free speech. If any agency of government referral material that is, it thinks is illegal or violates a company term of service, it should make the referral public and not just transmit it to social media companies in secret. Exactly. That's it right there. If something is not right, you let everybody know, hey, this is bull, but you don't keep it secret and you don't suppress people who are just going by what they feel is right. It does not... It does not and should not matter whether the agency launders a referral through a private sector consortium. The agency should also publish regular summary reports of its activities. The report and the underlying data should be available to independent research for review. Now, I'm not going to continue with the article, but you're getting the point of where I'm going with this. But if I need, but to prove my point even further so I can reinforce my argument, check this out. Article from the Washington Free Beacon. Biden administration to drop half a million on artificial intelligence that detects microaggression on social media. The Biden administration is set to dole out more than 500,000 in grants to develop an artificial intelligence model that can automatically, de excuse me, automatically detect and suppress microaggression on social media government spend, spending records show. The award funded through President Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan was granted to the Research 
Researchers at the University of Washington in March to develop technology that could be used to protect online users from discriminatory language. The researchers have already received 132,000 and expect the total government funding to research 550 excuse me, 550,436 over the next five years. Who is going to decide what is microaggressive and who is going to be deciding what language is discriminatory? I want to meet these people. I want to know if they have any specific agendas in t attached to them. Because as I said to you before, our freedom of speech is on the line here. And when you've got politicians who are more interested in maintaining power than freedom of speech, this program, this algorithm or AI can be used as a weapon against people who are opposite of that politician or even some activist group or organization's beliefs. This is a dangerous thing that we're talking about and that taxpayer money is being used to fund. You'll love this. Really, you'll love this. The researchers are developing machine learning models that can analyze social media posts to, to, to detect implicit bias and microaggression commonly defined as slight as slights that cause offense to members of marginalized groups it's a broad category but past research conducted by the lead researchers on the university of washington project suggest something as tame as praising meritocracy could be considered a microaggression. The Biden administration's funding of the research comes as the White House faces growing accusations that it seeks to suppress free speech online. Biden last month suggested that there should be an investigation into Tesla CEO Elon Musk's acquisition of Twitter after the billionaire declared that the social media app would pursue a free speech agenda. Initially, Twitter communicator, communication Mark Musk's, excuse me, Musk released this month also revealed a prolonged relationship between the FBI and Twitter employees with the agency playing a regular role in platforms content moderation. Judicial Watch President Tom Hilton linked the Biden administration's funding of the artificial intelligence research to the Chinese Communist Party's effort to censor speech upon, upon approval by the state. For the Biden administration, Flinton, Flinton said the research is a project to make it easier for the leftist allies to censor speech. Okay, well, you know, we can continue on with this. Further down... There are research companies that argue that this is just an exaggeration or that it's misunderstood. A spokesman for the National Science Foundation, which issued the research grant, rebuffed criticism of the project, which he said does not attempt to hamper free speech. The project, the spokesman said, creates automated ways of identifying bias in speech and addresses the bias of humans content moderators who is going to program this thing and who's going to teach it what is and what is not biased and a way to identify bias in speech is just so wrong i'm dead set against this I'm going to end the video right here because I've probably dragged this thing out longer than it should have been, but it's just, I'm so passionate and concerned about this. Do you think I'm wrong here? Do you think maybe um, I'm misinterpreting the articles and that this is just a, a way for the government to try and calm down some censorship that's taking place or criticisms that are taking place? But I got to ask you this question though. Freedom of speech is so important. Everybody has their viewpoints and different ways of approaching it. YouTube commentators such as myself come out here and present information 
And if we don't like something, if I'm ripping apart a movie, it's not because I hate the director or I hate the actor. I hate the movie or I hate the way the message that the movie presents. Is that going to be considered biased? Or if it has some kind of an agenda that I disagree with? Am I biased because I don't agree with the programmer of the AI? Does it give them the right to shut me down? Well, my friends, again, I want to hear from you. I'd like to hear your comments on this subject. It's important to me. And once again, if you like the video, please share it. I really would like this one to get out so people know what may or may not be coming down the line. If you are a commentator, what do you think about all this? Or excuse me, a creator, a YouTube creator. Or if you're someone who just watches creators and wants to know what, why they do what they do, or if you're thinking about becoming one, this concerns you. I'm WFS, your doctor, and until the next time, my friends, God bless.